All right, welcome in college basketball tip-off show powered by wagertalk.com on this uh, final day of February, a little leap year uh, we're dealing with right now here in February, but that's all right. We got plenty of college basketball here today, including a couple of big games we're going to break down for you. We've got three best bets coming your way from three of the finest individuals you will meet at wagertalk.com as we welcome back. Oh, never mind. Brian Powers here. Uh, <laughs> Brian Powers in the house. Double R, one L. Steve Merrill in the house, as well as the pen. Mr. Ralph Michaels ready to roll here on a jam-packed uh, Thursday in college hoops. And uh, BP, always a uh, pleasure to see you. Uh, it's uh, I feel like we just did this, and uh, good news is we get to do it again. So uh, we do have a uh, loaded slate of games here, and I do believe you have at least one game most people have actually heard of these teams. So uh, let's talk about Memphis and East Carolina uh, going off here. East Carolina at home plus four, I think, is what we're looking at there. I can't figure out Memphis. Have you figured out Memphis? Uh, and are they worth backing in this spot? Well, Joe, I'll talk about Memphis in just a second. But, you know, leap your buddy. Just one more day for you and I to hang out. I think mm. I speak for, for you when I say that's just <laughs> great, isn't it? Now, let's talk about Memphis, okay? This has not been a profitable team to back, Joe. You know that. 10 and 18 against the spread overall. That's bottom 15 in the country in terms of net units. It was in January things got really ugly for Penny Hardaway's team. They went 1-7 and seven against the number that month, lost four consecutive games outright. Lately, been a slight turnaround. They've won 5-7 of seven in February, and coming off what I think is fair to say their best two-game stretch in a while, they had mm. a blowout win over Charlotte. That was by 24 as a six-point favorite. And they just beat FAU on Sunday, who, in your words, Joe, uh, blows. So uh, maybe mm. I guess we shouldn't give them that uh, too much credit for that victory. But both of those Memphis wins were at home. Tonight, they're on the road, visiting East Carolina and laying points. I talked about how Memphis has been a little bit better of late. Well, they're still only 5-14 and 14 ATS, guys, when laying points. So the chalk roll has not been kind. East Carolina, interesting team. So they're off a terrible loss uh, by 18 to Rice. But before that, our old friends at Rice, uh, before that, they'd won and covered three straight. And the most interesting thing I found out about handicapping this game with East Carolina is over the last five home games, they've won three times. And one of the two losses was just by a single point. So they have played well in Greenville. The only loss by more than a point at home was to whom? USF who's the regular season champions in the American and, and a team that we've talked a lot about how much they've overachieved. Very interesting. East Carolina, Joe, was a one-point favorite here against mm -hmm. South Florida at home. So I would lean towards taking the points. Memphis is not as good as South Florida. They're very inconsistent. East Carolina do some positive regression, I think, from three. And I'll wrap it up with this tidbit. Earlier I mentioned East, uh, or pardon me, Memphis struggling as a favorite. Well, they also struggle out on the road. Last five road games, 0-5 against the number just one straight up win in that stretch give me east carolina the points for today's big game breakdown all right not uh not trusting uh memphis here uh we'll take the points with the home dog in that one uh double r one l steve merrill ready to roll here out west uh i don't know that there's a later game than the one you're choosing uh 11 o'clock eastern time tip there i think the zags taking on the Dons, and I believe this is at the Chase Center. So a bit of a uh, neutral court situation uh, here. But uh, any which way you cut it, not a lot of people talking about the Zags, but if they keep winning games, including tonight, yeah, they uh, their ticket will be punched, and uh, I don't know how many people are going to want to play them. So what do you do tonight here against the Dons? Good look at the late West Coast game here at 11 o'clock Eastern Gonzaga, San Francisco. And I wanted to talk about this game because I think the side and total are somewhat correlated. I mentioned this in the video I did yesterday for one of the later games between Alabama and Ole Miss. And I said I thought Ole Miss had to slow the game down in order to have success. They didn't want to get in a running matchup against the best offensive team in the country, Alabama. So I said that Ole Miss and the under were somewhat correlated. And we saw the money move to both of those. 
and everybody jumped into the comments afterwards. That didn't work out so much for that correlated parlay. I was like, well, the other side of that correlated parlay, Alabama and the over did hit. So the handicap is right. Just it didn't work out for Ole Miss. I think it's a similar situation in this game with Gonzaga and San Francisco. San Francisco cannot afford to get in a track meet and up-tempo game against a very good full-court team in Gonzaga. But San Francisco is the better-rated defensive team, and they play at one of the slower paces in the conference. So at home, I do think they can dictate the tempo. So once again, I think this is a game in which we have a correlated parlay. If you like San Francisco, it probably correlates to the under. If that doesn't work out, Gonzaga and the over would be the other way to play it. I lean more towards San Fran and the under in this game, though, uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, as I mentioned, home teams, I think, can dictate the tempo, and San Francisco will look to slow this game down. We've seen the total be bet from 156 down to 153. I would agree with that move. Uh, these teams met earlier this season. It totaled 149 in Gonzaga. Um, it was only a uh, close game, by the way, in that one earlier this season. San Francisco only lost 77 to 72 as an eight-point dog. Now they're only a four-point home dog, and we've seen this line drop a little bit from the opener of four and a half. So I think San Fran and the under makes sense in this one. If I had to choose between the two, I'd like the under a little bit better just because even though San Francisco kept the game close on January 25th, they've still lost seven straight in this series, and they're just five and 55 straight up. They've lost 55 of the last 60 meetings. So getting just a couple baskets isn't quite enough to get me to the window with San Fran, but I do think they look to slow it down to a half-court game. I like under 153, and I do think San Fran and the under are correlated. But the other side of that is if you like Gonzaga, the over is correlated. So it really depends on how you think the tempo plays out in this game. I think the home team can slow it down tonight. Uh, by the way, happy February 29th to everybody. And just a quick reminder, for today and tonight only, Leap Year Special. Leap 29 gets you an instant 29% discount on any direct subscription at wagertalk.com. What a great time to lock up my number one basketball. I said, it's the history of Wager Talk. Nobody's won more units on sides in college and pro basketball combined. I'm having another great season this year at Wager Talk. So it's a great time to lock up the rest of the basketball season or any all access, all sports subscription and get 29% off instantly with promo code LEAP29, L E A P 29, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, Ralph, uh, Big Ten bound is where you're heading here, it looks like. Uh, Ohio State taking on uh, Nebraska in a uh, in a big one here for certainly uh, Nebraska. Are you, uh, are you thinking the Cornhuskers uh, can handle business tonight, or do you think Ohio State on the way out the door getting ready to play spoiler here against a lot of teams? I do like the Buckeyes, Joe, but, you know, Steve Merrow mentioned Leap 29 for our Leap Year special. This is the meaningless fact that everyone can now know moving forward. <laughs> Leap Year always falls on the, on the year of the Summer Olympics and the presidential election. So if yep. you're ever thinking when's Leap Year, you correlate with one of those two things and you got them all together. All right, let's talk about the first game on the board and one of the earliest tip-offs to offset Steve being the latest game on the board. And we're talking about an Ohio State team that's only 16 and 12, facing a Nebraska team that's 20 and eight this year. So why are the Buckeyes a favorite? Well, it comes down to them having fired Chris Holtman a few games back. Remember, Ohio State was three and nine in the Big Ten, 13 and 10 overall. They beat Maryland in two overtimes at home. Holtman gets some more breathing room. But they go to Wisconsin, they lose by eight, and they let Holtman go. What do they do? They pull the upset against Purdue at home. They go to Minnesota, they lose. And then they go to Michigan State and pull the double-digit outright upset, winning two of the last three against two very strong teams. So you often get that extra bounce, especially for a team that was picked, uh, I think they were picked sixth or seventh in the Big Ten. Nebraska was picked 11th or 12th. So you have quality players in a situation that they just weren't performing well. So we have the bounce off getting an assistant interim coach and the defense over those last couple games, they've held their last two foes to 44% and less. And overall in the last five games, they've held the last five foes to a combined 43% shooting. Excellent defense, especially at home. Now Nebraska plays great defense as well. But on the road, they're only two and seven straight up, and they're three and six ATS on the road. Now, when this game just ended up being short of making my card, and I'll let you know why. For Ohio State, they are missing, well, 
Jamison Battle started the first 27 games this year. He actually missed that Michigan State upset, making that Michigan State Spartans win an even better win. Battle's a question mark for tonight. If you're tuning into this game and you see Jamison Battle is going to play, then I do like Ohio State as well as a client release. But then I also look at Nebraska, Joe. You said it's an important game for Nebraska. They're sitting at 20 and 8. They played a 68 schedule, so it, you're, you're pretty assured of being the Big Ten and you're in. But I'm sure they'd like that road win. And to me, that adds added pressure. And one more thing I want to point out about the Cornhuskers. Since uh, Fred Hoiberg came over from Iowa State, first year here, he went 7-25. and 25. Then he improved to 7-20. and 20. Then 10-22. and 22. Last year, they went 16-16. and 16. So it's exactly what you want to see when you bring a coach in. You improve, you improve, you improve. And in the, in the, in the current season, you improve again. But they're off their 20th win. When you have a team that's averaged 11 wins over the last four years and you get to that mythical 20 win mark, not a mythical 20 win mark, a celebrated 20 win mark, making you a quality team, there's celebration. I'm sure they celebrated in Lincoln, Nebraska, beating Hmm. Minnesota at home 73 to 55, getting that 20th win. Now they're going on a road. So I went to the database going back when a team won their last game as a home favorite to get them to 20 wins, and now they're on the road as a small away dog, those teams have covered just 37.7% against the spread. So you have that 20th win, you're celebrating, you're partying, now you go on the road in a competitive game, teams have fallen flat in that role. I do think Ohio Mm. State wins this game, and again, if you see battle in the lineup for Ohio State makes it even stronger for me. No doubt, Nebraska seventeen and one at home, but not great on the road, uh, Ralph. So two and seven on the road, tough spot for him here uh, tonight. There and certainly the uh, the trends and the pen are leaning towards uh, Ohio State to get it done here tonight against the Cornhuskers. So he got it. Three big game breakdowns here. We got three best bets uh, coming up, uh, your way here. So don't forget if you're joining us, uh, for the first time here to go ahead, hit that subscribe button, become part of the wager talk TV family, a thumbs up would certainly be appreciated as well, because, uh, we do have a few other games here, uh, tonight with some edges and we're going to start with Brian power here, who is, uh, no doubt, uh, trying to figure out, what the best side is between Tarleton State, who he's actually, to give him credit for, has talked about before on the show, and Utah Tech, who I think is getting, what, four, four and a half, somewhere along those lines here. So what do you think here? Uh, is it Texas? Is it Utah? Is it where you where are you leaning towards here, BP, tonight? Well, at least it's not Canada, Joe. Uh, anyone who turned oh, to the NBA show yesterday knows that. Uh, oh, but we, we've got our geography. <laughs> all right. So these teams are kind of obscure. You, we can laugh about them all you want. But, Joe, I don't think there's a hotter team at the old betting window right now than Tarleton State. They have covered eight straight mm. games. And even more impressive, they have won all eight of those straight up, despite the fact that, They have been an underdog in five of those eight games. So a really, really hot run for Tarleton State. Uh, The most noteworthy win exactly one week ago. They beat Grand Canyon, who is the top team in the WAC. That was an upset, 77-74 as five-point underdogs. Saturday, you would think it was the classic letdown spot, right? They were hosting Cal Baptist. I know Cal Baptist isn't a good team. Well, Tarleton State didn't have a letdown. They won 82-65 there and uh, that was that eighth consecutive win and cover but we've got to acknowledge something joe and that is if you go to ken palm and you click on the luck column guess who shows Mm. up number one it would be tarleton state here's the deal with this uh recent run of theirs five of their last nine wins have been by five points or less so laying points Mm. now on the road with them to me seems a little bit risky to that point they've only been a road favorite once and they pushed as a four-point favorite against uh, Rio Grande Valley. I would lean towards taking the points with Utah Tech here. It was a bad loss Saturday 
against UT Arlington, but that was a weird second half. They give up 55 points. UT Arlington had 40 free throw attempts, and they made 33 of them too. So Mm. it's tough to win when the other team's doing that. And you look at Utah Tech uh, before that, okay, they've lost three in a row overall, but the other two losses were to Grand Canyon and Seattle. Seattle, a team that maybe a lot of you aren't following, but Ken Palm actually considers Seattle the second-best WAC team, even better than Tarleton State. And that loss by Utah Tech to Seattle was just by a single point. So I think we're getting some value here, Joe, with Utah Tech. I would take the home team plus the points. And, oh, by the way, Ralph let me know before the show that that trend he mentioned with Nebraska also applies to Tarleton. So they could be in a letdown spot as well coming off that uh, 20th win. So, uh, yeah, home dog or pass for me in this whack Thursday night matchup. I like it. Fading the market move on Tarleton. To hell with that. Too many points. Take them with the home dog of Utah State, says Brian Power here, the, uh, the senator from Ohio. Unfortunately, we have the ranking center of Ohio here. Uh, and we'll get to him in just a minute there with Ralph Michaels. But I'm glad to see at least, Steve, he learned uh, the difference between north and up. Uh, that was impressive <laughs> yesterday there, the uh, senator from Ohio. Uh, but he is uh, hes special. We'll leave it at that. Uh, but so is this uh, this game you're going to pick for us here, Merrill, on a, uh, on a best bet, kind of. You at UMBC, I believe, and I'm shocked this isn't a total involved with this team because that's all they do is run. But New Jersey, uh, is it New Jersey Tech they're taking on here? Which uh, which side of this battle are you looking at here tonight? Yeah, just a couple quick things for Brian Power. First of all, North is not always up. North is always up on a map, <laughs> yes. but up is not always North. Yes. So just remember, that's a good life lesson. You can keep you out of trouble. Also, it's Bizarro Day. Not only is it a leap year, it's February 29th, but Ralph Michaels is breaking down a Colonial, a CAA game. It's actually now the Coastal Athletic Association, but he's breaking down a mm-hmm. CAA game. I'm not. So in honor of Ralph, I had to go dumpster dive in here and find a below 300 team in the Ken Palms to talk about. And that's why we're using New Jersey Institute of Technology. I mean, you might have trouble finding this game. Not only is it on the extra board, but both teams go by aliases. If you look at the Wager Talk <laughs> Live odds, it's New Jersey Tech. Maryland, Baltimore County. But then if you look at Ken Palm, it's UMBC, NJIT, as you see on the screen there. So they're both incognito, or as Brian would say, in burrito. And neither one of these teams is close to getting to 20 wins this season. They've got 10 and 19 Baltimore against 7 and 19 New Jersey Tech. I'll take the ugly duckling as a home dog. And there's a few reasons why I think New Jersey Tech is the play in this game. Uh, First of all, they played them tight earlier this season. It wasn't in the first half. They were getting blown out at Baltimore County back on January 27th. They were down by 22 points at the half. And you would think a slowdown half-court team like New Jersey Tech would have no chance of catching up. But Baltimore County just can't help themselves, and they have to play fast. (laughs) They can't slow things down. They don't go four corners. And New Jersey Tech made a monster comeback, outscored them by 23 points in the second half to win 75-74. In that game, they were just 30% from three-point range. Baltimore County was 41%, and they still won. Uh, They had a 15-9 to offensive rebound edge. Uh, They took one less free throw attempt. So I think these teams are equal, and I think at home, New Jersey Tech will slow this down to the half-court pace they prefer, and it's going to frustrate an up-tempo, terrible defensive team in Baltimore County. Uh, Look at the home dog here, New Jersey Tech. It's a winnable game. They only have two games left. They're at Bryant on Saturday. I think they win their final home game. It'll be a focus spot here. New Jersey Institute of Technology plus the two-and-a-half to three points tonight on the extra board at 7 o'clock Eastern. And I've got a strong NBA best bet tonight, backed by an 18-1 super situation. Also, a free NBA best bet as well posted on my page. So check out the NBA content. And while you're there, don't forget to use promo code LEAP29, L-E-A-P-2-9. For this Thursday only, you get an instant 29% discount on any subscription package. I'm ranked number one on sides and totals all time in basketball at Wager Talk. I've got a strong NBA best bet side going tonight a bonus free side on the free play, but more importantly, lock up that subscription and save 29% with leap 29 today and tonight only on Thursday, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Ralph, we went dumpster diving on you here, man. He went, uh, I, I don't know. That's like on the extra extra board he's digging into here. And there is, uh, we usually leave that for you here, Ralph, but you're, you're going higher up on the board here, my man. 
Uh, not too high up, though, as you're going to be looking at Delaware taking on Northeastern. It would have been great if you picked the Elon William and Mary game, but that's uh, that's okay because uh, we know Merrill will probably – He'll be there you. at some point here today. So uh, what are we doing with Northeastern and Delaware, who's laying, what, five, five and a half at this point? Damn you, Joe. You actually took <clears throat> my punchline. This is yep. 1R, 1A, <laughs> Ralph Michaels. And no, I will not be at the William and Mary game today because they're at Elon. But I will be there Saturday against Hampton as they try to be, break an eight-game conference losing streak. I'm not talking about that game at all. So that's just for Merrill. But I am going to break down Delaware. And Delaware is one of my two college basketball plays for tonight. I do have a top play trio, which is top NBA, top college basketball, top NHL. This play was a three-star release, and it is on Delaware. And to me, it's just the perfect storm of looking at two teams in a completely unique situation. Delaware's off back-to-back losses as a small dog and a small favorite. Northwestern only has 12 wins on the season, and they're off back-to-back wins. So why am I fading a team getting those points that is 12 and 17 off back-to-back wins? Well, they played two of the worst three teams in the Colonial Athletic. They were a double-digit favorite in both games, and they failed to cover both. So when I went to the database and I looked at Teams off back-to-back wins as a home favorite that failed to cover both games and they're now on the road. Those teams have only gone 41.3%. And then when I look at a team that was a double-digit favorite in both games, won them and failed to cover in January, February, and March, late in the season since 2018, those teams have only gone 31.3%. So we've got a great situation to fade Northeastern. This is Delaware's final home game, guys. The Colonial Athletic Association, the entire conference is done on Saturday. I did post all the conference schedules on my Twitter. You can look at that. But Northeastern's only 3-7-2 and two against the spread on the road. There are 3-7-2 uh, and two ATS, excuse me, their last 12 games. All three covers were as a favorite. And despite being a double-digit favorite in their last two games, the Huskies only shot 42.3% and 45.9%. So one of those very tricky situations with a team that's played a very strong schedule of late and has lost against a team that has played the poorest conference schedule of late and has won, the Blue Hens turn it around. Think about it. If you just said, okay, we have a team that's 17-2, and that's ahead of the team in the conference, versus the team that's 12 and seven, and you're only laying the five and a half at home, is it the right play? To me, it is game 776. That is an actual client release. And again, March, in the last three years at Wager Talk, I have finished number one at March, east of the last two years. Take advantage of that 149 college basketball special. It'll be 149 this weekend. It'll be 149 next weekend. And sooner you buy the more you get take advantage mm. yep absolutely still a couple of weeks left here before uh conference tournaments and then of course march madness along with everything else so definitely opportunities to hop on board here guys and uh, partner up with either ralph michaels or steve merrill or brian power uh take advantage uh today while you can with those uh those great promos and our friends from the gold sheet well they have a play of the day as well and they well they're going to take a look here at uh uc davis who's been going through it here a little bit but they are at home taking on hawaii here they are laying two and it looks like that is the way they're going to go here as it is senior night It is the final home game for UC Davis here tonight, and that's right around the time of season we're in here, guys, with these final couple of games of the regular season taking place. Hawaii just 1-7 and against the number as an underdog this season, and Hawaii shot 60% from three-point range in the first go-around on the island. Yeah, very little chance that uh, they do that again now that they're on the mainland taking on UC Davis on the road. So when you put it all together, 
UC Davis laying two against uh, Hawaii is not a bad look from our friends from the Gold Sheet. And I would encourage you guys to head over to goldsheet.com. Also, check out Gold Sheet Light. You guys are going to love this here as uh, it's got uh, all the breakdowns here of all the uh, 40 or more NBA games, college basketball games, stats, analysis, uh, recommendations, everything you need to know about the slate of games on the hardwood, both NBA and college basketball. Check out the Gold Sheet uh, today. It's Gold Sheet Light, wt.buzz forward slash TGS. All right, let's recap it one more time here as Ralph, he going Delaware minus five and a half here tonight while Merrill is going New Jersey Institute of Technology. Good luck finding that on a map, plus three. Uh, BP going Utah Tech plus five. Hell no, he'll take the points there against Tarleton State tonight. And our friends from the gold sheet, they're going to go UC Davis laying two here tonight against Hawaii. All right, that'll do it for us here at the College Basketball Tip-Off Show. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Become part of the Wager Talk TV family. Also, a uh, quick thumbs up there if you could hit that like button. We would certainly appreciate it. And keep in mind, uh, much more great content in college hoops, NBA, NHL, and everything in between coming your way here at Wager Talk TV. So until tomorrow, another Friday slate heading into one of the big final regular season weekend uh, slates of games here in College Hoops. We got much to talk about, so come back and join us. Until then, best of luck with all your plays tonight. We'll talk to you again soon.